Hi, welcome to my story time with Nana. We get to go back and see what's going on with Tony and Emma. I just can't wait. This is really exciting. Last time they met some new friends. Let's find out what's going to happen this week. Let's begin. Panning for gold. The children woke to the sound of rain hitting the roof. Oh no, it's raining, said Tony. I bet we won't be able to meet our new friends at the park. I wonder what we're going to do instead, said Emma. Let's go down and find out. The children made their beds and headed downstairs. Good morning, kiddos, said Granddad. He was making breakfast and Grandma was sitting at the table. Granddad, you know how to make breakfast, asked Tony. Oh, Granddad makes the best breakfasts, said Grandma. Wait till you taste his home fries. Today's special is Dippy Eggs, he said, and the Faison Family Famous Home Fries. Yay, Dippy Eggs, the children cried out. Hey, Granddad, it's raining. Are we going to have to stay inside today, asked Tony. No, Granddad answered. The rain will stop in time by the time we finish breakfast. Are, are we still going to be able to go to the park, asked Emma. Oh, yeah, I have big plans for you and your friends, Granddad answered. The rain will make our adventure even better. Granddad began putting the dippy eggs on each plate with heaping helpings of home fries. And Grandma poured glasses of milk for everyone. Breakfast was delicious and the home fries were the best, just like Grandma said they would be. And while the family ate breakfast, the rain tapered off. And by the time they finished, the rain had stopped, just like Granddad said it would. Grandma and the children cleaned up from breakfast while Granddad went out to the shed to get things ready for today's adventure. He didn't tell the children the plan, even though they had asked numerous times through breakfast. He would just say, it's a surprise. After breakfast was cleaned up, the children went upstairs to change and Grandma worked packing a picnic lunch for the day's adventure. It wasn't long before it was time to go to the park. Grandma, can I bring baby Myla? asked Emma. Sure, but put her in her wrap and wear her on your back, she answered. You're going to need both your hands free for today. Emma ran upstairs and wrapped her baby Myla into, onto her back. We're going on an adventure, Myla, she cried out. Granddad had a cardboard box on the front porch ready to go and grandma had the picnic lunch basket filled with goodies for the children and they walked down to the playground. Della and Lola were swinging on the swings when they got there. They both had their babies wrapped um, to their back. Baby Brennan was sliding down the slide with the help of Mr. Crabapple. Grayson and Chase were hanging from the monkey bars showing their daddy all the tricks they knew how they to do. Look at me, Daddy, called out Grayson. I can hang upside down. Me too, cried out Chase. Look at me, look at me. Wow, you both are sure pretty fancy on the monkey bars, their father told them. Emma ran to Della and Lola and plopped on a swing, and they began singing. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Along came the sun and dried up all the rain and the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Tony went to where Chase and Grayson were hanging and climbing up on the monkey bars and showed them how he could hang upside down too. Grandma walked over to Mrs. Crabapple and Miss Kingston and they had picnic baskets too. It looks like it's going to be a nice day, said Grandma, looking up into the sunny sky. Oh, yes, said Mrs. Crabapple. The children are very excited to be going on an adventure with Emma and Tony, especially after the scavenger hunt. Scavenger hunt, said Mrs. Kingston. 
Yes, Mr. and Mrs. Basin planned a scavenger hunt for the children the other day, and the girls cannot stop talking about it, said Mrs. Crabapple. Hmm, it sounds like you're going to spoil these kids, said Mrs. Kingston. Maybe we will, said Grandma. Granddad was standing next to Mr. Kingston when he called out, Okay, everybody, gather round, gather round. The girls jumped off the swings and ran over to where the boys were, and the boys flipped off the monkey bars, and everybody was standing around Grandpa, or Granddad. Today, we're going to pan for golden minerals, he said. Just inside the woods is a creek. I will give you your tools for panning when we get there. Is everybody ready? Yay, cried out all the children. Yep, I see it now, said Mrs. Kingston. You are going to spoil these children. Maybe we will, said Grandma with a smile. What is that, asked Grayson, pointing to a cobblestone circle as they entered the woods. Oh, that's a wishing well, Granddad told him. Let's go look at it. We're almost to the creek. They all followed Granddad to the wishing well. Listen, he said, as he dropped a stone into the well. One, two, he said, and then the children heard the splash as the stone hit the water. Wow, that's pretty deep, said Chase. It is pretty deep, said Grandma. That's how it holds your wishes safe. Can we make a wish, asked Emma. When you want something badly enough, we'll come back, said Grandma. Onward and forward, called out Granddad as he continued on towards the sound of the creek gurgling. The trees thinned out and they were all standing in a clearing with the creek ahead. It was flowing pretty quickly. See, said Granddad, it's a good thing we had some rain. It kicked up the creek and so now some of the sediment is going to be lifted up and you'll be able to do some nice panning today. Granddad set the box down and pulled out what looked like silver plates. He handed a plate to each one of the children. How does this work, asked Tony. Well, it's called a sluice pan, and it has a screen on the bottom, he said as he turned it over. You slip it in the water and drag the bottom of the creek, scooping up the dirt, and when you bring it up, there'll be sediment in there and water in the pan. And when you shake it, the water pours out through the screen. And then all you have left is big dirt and rocks and maybe even silver and gold. The children took their pans to the creek and started panning. And Granddad, Grandma, and Mr. Kingston showed the children how to scoop from the bottom of the creek and shake their pans to find out what they found. Look, called out Grayson, I found some silver. He was holding up a rock with flecks of silver. Me too, yelled out Tony. Soon all of the children were finding rocks with flecks of silver. Not only that, there were other rocks. There were purple rocks and black rocks and white rocks. All kinds of fancy looking rocks. Look what I found, cried out Lola, holding up a bright, shiny green rock. Look at mine, yelled out Chase. I think I found gold. His rock was gray with flecks of gold. Me too, cried out Emma, holding up her golden fleck stone. I found a red rock, yelled out Della. I think it's a ruby. The children were so excited with all the gems that they were finding in the creek. It seemed like every time they scooped from the bottom of the creek, they found another special stone. Grandma gave each child a small box to store their fancy stones in. Hi said a tall boy coming out of the woods. He walked toward the children. What are you doing? Hi, answered Chase. We're panning for gold. Want to try? Sure, he answered. Hey, Ethan, Emily, William, Claire, it's okay. Come on out. Four other children came out of the woods. Hi, they said. Well, hello, said Grandma. Are you visiting your grandparents? Yes, we are, answered the tall boy. How did you know? Oh, I know you. They're the Edmonds' grandchildren, right? Answered Grandma. Yes, my name is Lachlan, and this is my brother, F. Ethan, and my sister, Emily, Lachlan told her. And these are my cousins, William and Claire. My cousin, Maddie, is at home with her mommy. 
Well, glad to meet you, said Granddad. This is Tony and Emma. They're our grandchildren, and these are our neighbors, Della and Lola, and that's their baby brother, Brennan, he said, pointing to Mr. Grabapple with the baby. And this is Trey, Chase and Grayson. I have extra sluice pans. Come on over. I'll show you how to pan for gold and silver. Granddad handed the new children their pans and began showing them how to pan for gold. And after a while, Grandma rang a bell, and the children turned to see that lunch was ready. Thanks, Grandma. I'm starving, said Emma. All this panning for gold has really built up an appetite. Well, I guess we should be going, said Ethan. Oh, no, don't be silly, said Grandma. There's plenty. Stay and have lunch with us. Thank you, said Emily. The children rinsed their hands in the creek, collecting their boxes of gems and headed over to where Grandma, Mrs. Crabapple, and Miss Kingston had set up lunch. Grandma gave each child a little wet wipe to clean their hands a little better, and they all sat and ate lunch. Grandma had made bologna and cheese sandwiches. Mrs. Crabapple brought out strawberry cupcakes with pink icing. And Mrs. Kingston had juice boxes for everyone. It was quite a feast. Do you live in that big house on the lake, asked Tony. No, but our grandparents do, said William. We're visiting from the city. Oh, we always visit this time of year, Claire said. We have a huge Father's Day party, Lachlan chimed in. You have to come, said Ethan. Everyone is always invited. Can we go, Granddad? asked Emma. Oh, we wouldn't miss it for the world, said Granddad. Yay! yelled out Emma and Tony, Della and Lola. Grayson and Chase, even baby Brennan yelled out, Yay! as a little baby would. I suppose we should start cleaning up, said Granddad. Remember, children, we always leave things the way we found them. So if you've left anything or dropped any trash, you need to clean it up. We're visiting Mother Nature's house. We need to be respectful. The children began looking to make sure everything was cleaned up. They put away their sluice pans and helped clean up the lunch trash and, trash and began their walk back to the playground. And when they got back to the playground, the adults let the children play a bit, you know, so they could get to know each other a little bit better and get their zoomies out. I have an idea, said Granddad, when they were about to leave. Not tomorrow, but maybe the next day. What do you say about everyone coming over after lunch? Say around one o'clock. Why, Granddad, asked Tony. I have another surprise, and I think it will be even more fun with more children. Thank you, Mr. Faison, said Mr. Crabapple. Babies, too? Oh, sure. I think we can think of something for Brennan and Maddie to do, he answered. Thank you, said Lachlan. I'll tell my mom and dad. Me, too, chimed in Claire. All of the families went their separate ways, and Grandma and Granddad, Emma and Tony, walked home. Granddad, that was such a nice surprise. You make everything so much fun, said Tony. Thank you, Tony. You make me want to do fun things. Grandma, you always make the best lunches, said Emma. Well, thank you, Emma, answered Grandma. It makes me happy to see you eat. And when they got home, Tony and Emma helped Granddad clean up the sluicing pans and put everything away for the next time. How about we go out on the boat for a little while? Can Grandma come this time? asked Emma. Absolutely. Go inside and let her know, Granddad told her. Tony, help me out with the life jackets. So Grandma, Granddad, Tony, and Emma, baby Myla stayed back in her crib, all went out on the boat. And Granddad rowed over to the other side of the lake, and Grandma, Tony, and Emma got out and picked some more blackberries. I think I'm going to make some muffins with these blackberries, said Grandma. And then Granddad rowed the boat down the lake so the children could see the Edmund house from the water. And it looked even bigger from the water. Look, look, 
yelled out Tony. They have a pool. Oh, I hope we can swim when we go there on Father's Day, said Emma. Oh, I'm sure you'll get the chance, Granddad told her. Let's head back now so we can get cleaned up for dinner. Grandma helped Granddad tie off the boat when they docked, and this time on the boat, no one stood up too fast. Nobody was tipping over. It was smooth sailing. Okay, children, you both need baths. So, Emma, upstairs you go, said Grandma. Tony, you can get a bath in our bathroom. Granddad and I will get dinner ready while you're cleaning up. Can we have bubble baths, asked Emma. The answer was yes, of course. And by the time the children had their baths and were dressed in their jammies, dinner was on the table. And the family sat and ate a delicious meal of baked ziti, homemade garlic bread. Grandma made the best baked ziti, and Granddad made the best garlic bread. And after dinner, they all cleaned up together and then headed out onto the back porch to watch the stars pop out while they ate chocolate popsicles for dessert. That night, after Grandma's story, the children lay in bed looking at the stars through the skylights, and Emma said, Don't we have the best grandma and best granddad ever? Yeah, we do, said Tony. They make everything fun, every single time. Huh. I wonder what is going to happen in a day or so. Granddad has another surprise. I, I can't believe it. He thinks of everything and he makes everything so much fun. I hope you come back next week and hear the story. Don't forget to share my stories. I hope you enjoy them as much as I love writing them and telling them. I'll see you next week. Mwah! Have a great day.